I'm a photographer who loves Leica cameras and Leica lenses and I was one of the first who was lucky enough to get a Leica SL2 in his hands. I reviewed the camera in the last weeks, I posted some videos on my channel and I think in general the Leica SL2 in my opinion is the best system camera brought to market in 2019. Having said that I discovered a serious issue, probably a sensor issue in the Leica SL2 which I want to clarify for myself what's going on and I also want the problem to be fixed because it's an expensive gear and I want to use that camera day by day without running into issues like the one I'm describing in this video. So let's get started and get the discussion kicked off. The story starts on the first Sunday in 2020 when my wife and I were driving to the monastery Einsiedeln in Switzerland and then driving down the lake to the lower end to take some shots with the Leica SL2 from the lake in the foreground and the snowy Swiss mountains in the background. It was just after the blue hour and my Leica SL2 was on a tripod taking the shots and I was very happy with the scene. So I'm now here in Lightroom Classic and this is one of the shots taken at this lake. And this is the raw file here. This is the image after post-processing. I have my history of adjustments on the left-hand side here in the history section of Lightroom. And the metadata of the image is here. So we have an ISO of 100, which I think is recommended. If you go down to 50, it might be too low. And I think we should always try to get the most native ISO value for the sensor. And I think ISO 100 is that value. 24 millimeters, I used the 24 to 90 millimeter standard zoom lens for the SL series. I was using here 24 millimeters because I wanted to have the widest angle possible to get a wide image field here. I used an aperture of 8.0 to get reasonable sharpness across the whole image from foreground to background. And I used 240 seconds of exposure, which means four minutes and which is also the reason why the stars are trailing up here on the night sky at this particular scene. Now, in general, the image also is quite nice. So if we go into a one, into a 100% zoom and we look at the mountains, very, very nice. You see lots of details given the darkness which was around me when I took the shot. It's a very, very nice picture. You see lots of details, good structure. You also see some star type lights here. Very nice. If we come to the more near horizon here, the grass, the bushes, even that house and the structure of the roof, all very nice, very good. There was a little floating island here, which I basically removed by the spot removal tool because it was very fuzzy based on the wind I had on this evening. But you can also leave it and maybe it gives the image a different additional dynamic. I don't know, for me, in my taste, I just removed it because I didn't like it. But in general, very nice. Also, if you look at the stars, pinpoint sharp, very good. The level of noise, reasonable for a four minute exposure. So I think it all confirmed my opinion that the Leica SL2 is just the camera to go with when I do these kind of shots. But then I discovered something else and that really made me think. So what I discovered was that the whole image is covered with spread out pixels and uh, Maybe as a brief introduction and uh, to explain to people not so familiar with photography what that could mean. So there are basically three types of pixel problems you can have on a sensor. There are stuck pixels, dead pixels and hot pixels. And stuck pixels basically means that a single individual pixel forgot to reset itself and that can be adjusted. There are methods to actually get this away. The second one are dead pixels. Then a pixel is in the meaning of the word dead. It means if an electric circuit is reaching that pixel, it's not reacting at all. And that's typically a black color. That's not the issue I have here. And the third category are hot pixels. And hot pixels typically come into play when you have long exposure times on a sensor and the sensor gets warm and then you can get hot pixels. But what I saw here on that image is something I've never seen before. And I also didn't realize it in that way when I was doing my New York skyline shooting. You find the link on my video on that shooting in the info box below that video here. And uh, I saw some pixels, hot pixels, but that was okay. They can occur from time to time and you can remove them with the spot removal tool. That's not a problem. But what I saw here was just blowing me away in terms of the problem. I don't know if you can see this. Maybe I go here to 
300 zoom and then you see it here in the water here 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 everywhere it's everywhere in that image and it's way off too massive as a problem to correct it with a spot removal tool i would sit for hours to get all those pixels away it's also here in the forest in the upper part i think i saw even some in the night sky like here and here they cannot be stars because stars over four minutes they trail up and that's not the case here and some of them have a different color most of them are white so my best educated guess is that we have the third category here which is hot pixels but it makes the picture basically unusable for me so i'm from time to time selling large prints and i get a lot of money for those prints so i can collect between 3000 and 6000 swiss francs per large print with a two meter side length and uh, this picture i could never sell to anybody because in the magnification you would get in a large print, you would clearly see those pixels. And that's something I cannot have. Look at this one here on the forest. So completely ruined picture by this pixel rain. Let's call it a pixel rain on the image. And there's absolutely no way to remove them because there are way of too many of them, probably a few hundred on that image here, which makes the picture absolutely useless for me. And it's a shame because I was spending time and effort to go to that place. I was taking the pictures in the camera preview. You cannot spot these pixels, but now it's too late and I'm at home and the picture is ruined. Let's just quickly look into a magnification of the pixel disaster we have here in that image. So zooming in into the image after post-processing and I come to post-processing in a moment, I actually just marked a few of those pixels here and as you see it's all over the place and this is only a tiny little section of the overall image. So what I'm going to do next is a little experiment and looking at the different noise reduction settings of the Leica SL2 and taking dark shots and then seeing what the result is if I can replicate that problem and what we get if we play around with noise reduction settings accessible by the menu of the camera. So the Leica SL2 has two settings when it comes to noise reduction and they are both on page two in the main menu. The first is here under JPEG settings. So here you can first of all adjust the size, which is not relevant for this video here, but you can also select whether you wanna have low, medium or high noise reduction in the JPEG processing in the camera. And uh, I think for the time being, we keep this at low. And then there is another setting here, which is at the bottom of the menu on page two. And that is highly appreciated because in some previous Leica cameras, you basically had no control whether there is long exposure noise reduction or not. And here, I think for the first time in the Leica camera, which I really find good that it is included here, you can actually switch long exposure noise reduction on and off. So let's put this on off for the time being and let's do a first shot with the camera. So here are the settings I use for my little experiment. First of all, I'm fully in manual mode here. Second, I have chosen aperture of f8, which is the same aperture I used for that night shooting in the Swiss mountains. I have a six minute exposure time here and an ISO of 100, which should be give or take the native ISO of the SL2 sensor. I'm also on manual focus because if I'm on autofocus and since I have the lens hood on the lens and I will also cover the camera with the hood, the camera will not be able to focus and therefore not release the shutter. That I can avoid by putting it on manual focus. And the last setting here is the self timer of 12 seconds, which gives me sufficient time to put that hood over the camera and make sure there is no accidental light falling on the sensor, which can always happen even if the lens hood is on the lens. So I'm going to release the shutter now. It starts to count here, down 12 seconds. We have a hood here, which we are going to place on top of the camera. Make sure it sits firmly. It's actually a razor back, very convenient for this little experiment. And I just heard the shutter release, so I will be back in six minutes. So I just heard the shutter release again, which means that the exposure has been taken. It should be a six minute pitch black image, which we have now on the SD card here from uh, the Leica SL2. And now let's change the experiment and let's switch the noise reduction for long exposures on. So we go down here and we say on, and then we repeat the same experiment 
and compare the images later on. And there will be a third image I'm going to take, but that comes after the next 12 minutes because taking long exposure noise reduction on basically means it takes a six minute exposure and then it takes a six minute dark frame and they are subtracted for the noise reduction process. So let's get started here. Let's release the shutter again. It counts down 12 seconds. We take the hood again. So I heard the shutter release. Let's remove the hood here. And uh, let's look at the camera. Let's also zoom in a little bit. So the last image I'm going to take is, I go back into the menu and you see here, I still have long exposure noise reduction on. And now in order to check on the JPEG, I go to the JPEG settings and boost noise reduction in JPEG processing up from low to high. And then we take again the same shot, cover it with the hood, and then we compare the three images, three images in RAW and three versions processed as JPEGs in the camera. So let's release the shutter again, 12 seconds time to put the cover or shield on here. And now this will take another 12 minutes, but this time, at least for the JPEG, we have a difference because for the JPEG, we increased the noise reduction effect from low to high. So the last image is ready. The camera is ready. I'm taking out the SD card now and I'm looking at the images in Lightroom to see if there is anything to discover here, which also hopefully helps to explain what went wrong with my shot in the Swiss mountains. By the way, touching the camera now, the camera body is warm, but reasonably warm. So I don't think we have an overheating issue here. And um, we'll find out hopefully via Leica camera in Switzerland what's going on here. So the temperature I feel on the camera is absolutely normal. I've had much worse with other cameras which had heating issues, in particular some early Sony DSLMs had those issues. And uh, in particular in video mode, that's not happening here. It's just a little bit warm, but still okay. So I imported the three RAW files into Lightroom now. And you see here on the left hand side, the dark shot with noise reduction off. And here the same shot, same data on the exposure parameters as on the left hand side with noise reduction on low in the menu of the camera. As expected at first sight and from a distance, nothing eye catching here. So there is not much going on. I think in order to see that there is something going on and whether there is any effect on the noise reduction at all is if we zoom into the picture, let's just do this by click here. So now we had 400% and you clearly see on the left hand side, there is more stuff going on when it comes to pixel errors than on the right hand side where we had noise reduction on, but it's actually on both sides. And what is also interesting is that the pattern is completely random. At least to me, it looks like there would be not a repetition in the patterns or a replication of the patterns. If we take different shots, we get different pixel patterns on that image here. Here's an interesting side remark I need to make. So first of all, noise reduction is based, as I mentioned before, on the subtraction of a dark frame with exactly the same exposure data as we had it in the actual shot. And uh, that's why it's also affecting the digital negative here, which means the raw file. And if we scroll around, we really see the difference. So let's, with that section here, go around. You see here clearly much more noise on the left-hand side where this dark frame noise reduction is switched off than on the right-hand side where it is switched on. Of course, now, if we switch to the different JPEG settings here, so we have now the two images here where on both images noise reduction is on, but here is high and here is low, then you actually should not see any difference at all. And I think given that we already discovered that the pattern is random, that's probably confirmed. So I think the noise in both pictures is comparably the same because that setting between low, medium and high on noise reduction should only affect JPEGs and is also only included in the JPEG section of the camera menu. So here we should not see any difference in the digital negative, but of course in the JPEG, which I'm going to look at in a moment.
The last thing I want to consider in Lightroom is here in the development section. So I'm now in the picture with noise reduction off and you see on the left hand side the native RAW file and on the right hand side you see it after adjustments in Lightroom. And um, I played a little bit already, but uh, let's reset this for the time being. So this is now exactly the same. No matter where we go in the image, it should look the same way. And if we now increase exposure here, something very interesting happens. So that whole image basically gets up and lighted with all kinds of color pixels which I think is something you will also observe with other cameras, but maybe not in that intensity. And uh, we could now basically try out which settings would reduce that effect of pixel errors best. And uh, of course, it depends on the situation of what you want to achieve, if this becomes meaningful or not. What I also quickly checked is whether Camera Raw, the module from Adobe in the Creative Cloud processing digital negatives or raw files into JPEGs is already compatible with the Leica SL2. It turned out, yes, it's compatible already. So it's listed here in camera support edit in December 2019. You see the Leica SL2 in the middle of the camera. And I also checked quickly on the version of my camera raw plugin for Lightroom and the Lightroom version if I'm already on the newest version or if there is something to maybe update. But that was not the case. My version of Lightroom, since I'm subscriber to Adobe Cloud, is already up to date and also my camera raw module is already up to date so actually there should be no issues from a post-processing side let's now quickly look at the jpeg so here's noise reduction off and it's one example i took as a screenshot here is again noise reduction off a second example very grainy very noisy here noise reduction is low a little better than what we saw before and here noise reduction is high by far the best image but still grainy and noisy absolutely not satisfactory and i don't know how good this is visible on youtube given video compression but here on my macbook it's really disappointing what i see so in order to save my picture because i really like that picture i tried something completely different i imported the digital negative into capture one from phase one and pushed the auto process button and besides the white balance which looks a bit awkward on this image now all of a sudden the pixel rain was gone well, I should probably say not gone, but significantly mitigated. So the pixel rain was no longer there. There were some isolated pixels, which I could easily remove via spot removal tool. But that's basically all. Not a disaster at all. Something normal if you take a long exposure over four minutes on a sensor at nighttime. So importing just to play around the image back into Adobe Lightroom. This picture looks now pretty good. So I adjusted a gradient filter for the sky. I adjusted the white balance because the quick auto development in Capture One was a bit awkward when it came to white balance. And uh, now the picture looks pretty nice. You still have all the structure. You still have all the details. It looks very good. By the way, I also see this here on the side in the corners. If you look at that little house here or batch, pretty nice. You even see the structure at the roof. So all in a good image now and most importantly, the pixel rain is gone. So there is no pixel rain any longer. And it seems that the raw processing algorithm of Capture One is recognizing it, calculating it out of the picture, and then the issue is gone. There are still isolated pixels which should not be there. And uh, I, I think found a few of them, removed a few. So here we have one for instance sitting here. Um, let's just quickly zoom in a little bit. So you still see some pixels here, which should not be there. But in general, the image is an image I can use and looks much, much better than what we had before in the image processing from uh, Adobe Cloud and Camera Raw. So let's quickly wrap up on the video here. First of all, on the normal shooting conditions, I found no issues with the Leica SL2. It's a terrific camera perfect image quality. If you want, look into my video from the fireworks in Zurich by the end of 2019. All pictures have been taken handhold and the image quality is just perfect. So nothing to complain here, period. Also the handling, the menu setup, everything is clear, understandable. It's very logic when you follow the menu structure and the handling in general from the camera is just something I really enjoy, including the customization of buttons. So nothing to complain here. Under special shooting conditions so when you go for longer exposure times one minutes and beyond 
You cannot process the images with Lightroom or in general with Camera Raw in the Adobe Creative Cloud because you cannot manually remove hundreds of pixels in a pixel rain like you saw it in this video we are the spot removal tool because that's just taking hours and it's also taking away completely the pleasure you have from taking that photo. The workaround can be done via Capture One. Capture One is good for DNG processing. It seems to recognize that these pixels should not be there and it's removing them by software, which is very helpful. Then of course, on the firmware side, I think Leica needs to improve that. So the whole purpose of a dark frame noise reduction is to actually spot those pixels and remove them, calculate them out of the image by software. And that's obviously not happening here. I'm in good contact with a manager from Leica Switzerland, very friendly people, very supportive. They are aware of the issue. I'm sure in the next firmware update, we will get a fix of that problem. And then we can go back to the bundled situation of a Leica camera with Adobe Creative Cloud software. And then the last point, Adobe Camera Raw needs to be fixed. And uh, I remember around Christmas when I visited the homepage from uh, Adobe, it said that the camera processing module for the Leica SL2 is still a pre-version. Now they claim it's finalized, but obviously, as you just saw, it's not finalized in particular when you compare it with what happened in Capture One, where this pixel rain is automatically removed without you getting your hands on. So that's all good. And uh, I hope you enjoyed that video. I hope it's helpful. Maybe some people out there found the same issues like I had it with my shooting here on this lake in Switzerland. And there is a workaround, don't worry. The camera is not broken. Again, don't worry. And I'm sure Leica will fix it. Third time, don't worry. So this will all be good in a few weeks, hopefully. If you liked my video, please give me a thumbs up. If you like my channel, please subscribe. Thanks for watching. Peace out and happy shooting.